I have the Bintac B&W S45 Mini out today. This one comes in 45 caliber, but you can also get this in 357 caliber. A big thank you to Tom at Bluegrass Big Boar for sending out this Bintac S45 for me to try out today. For air capacity, we have a rear and front tank. Both hold 250 cc's of air. You also have an option to upgrade this to a 350 cc carbon fiber bottle. Today we're rocking the Donnie FL Emperor Moderator and the extension tube. But in order to fit that with the cylinder sticking out this far, we need the Texoma Precision Pellet 4 inch barrel extension to clear this 250 cc cylinder. For a scope on this, we have a Sniper Precision Optics VT 4 to 16 power first focal plane. This S45 Mini is in 45 caliber, comes with two six round magazines. And it's also highly recommended that you get the speed loader for this because the tension on these magazine springs can get pretty tough to actually hold them back and then feed a pellet in to lock it in place. So this is highly recommended. Today we have two types of slugs that we're gonna be using. Texoma Precision Pellet 172 grain and Texoma Precision Pellet 178 grain slugs. For the standard configuration, this comes out to 27 inches with the moderator, extension tube, and the barrel extender. We are at about 44 and a half inches. The barrel on this one is nine inches. Now this comes standard with a muzzle brake. Let's see how much this accounts for in the weight. So we're at one pound, 13 ounces. Accounting for the weight of this scope, which is 20.2 ounces, we have nine pounds, 10 ounces. So that comes out to eight pounds, six ounces for this S45 Mini with the muzzle brake attached. Let's get started with the Bintech S45 Mini today. I have a bunch of tests I wanna put this thing through, but first off, let's do some accuracy tests. See what groups we can get with these slugs. Unfortunately, I don't have any hollow points. I really wish I did have some of those so I could see how effective that would be against some targets that I'm gonna to have today. But unfortunately, we just have these two to put through it. So let's get started. All right, first things first, Safety is number one priority. <laughs> In order to take out any of the fluctuation with my shooting and seeing how well these group on this target, I'm gonna use my man billy tripod. This time I have a clamp on it instead of the Picatinny adapter, considering this doesn't have one. All right, let's see how these 172s from Texoma Precision Pellet do. We're at 25 yards. All right, I'm gonna top this off real quick, just so we have a same variable for the next group. And then after this, I'm gonna do one more group of each. I'm gonna leave this tethered. 178s are up next. Those are way off. All right, let's go for far right center line. Well, unfortunately that ammo jammed, so we're not gonna be using that anymore. We're gonna stick with the 172 grains. Let me go clear this jam real quick and then we'll come back and do one more group with it on the tether. So to clear that jam, all we have to do is unscrew this nut, the barrel, and start throwing it off and then clear this out of it. <laughs> so we're not gonna be using the ammo anymore. We're gonna stick with the 172s. I'll be right back. All right, we're back in business. Let me just top off these mags. We're tethered now, let's do two more groups. All right, so to use this speed loader, we have a circle here. That fits into this circle here. Once that's seated, we just turn. I wanna keep turning until we get to the end. Now we're at the end. We put one round in. After that, it holds the spring tension in place. Then you just turn this and you just feed them into each hole until you make it all the way back. It's pretty simple. You just need this tool to make it a lot easier because doing that without this, having this slip out of your hand and all that spring tension release, it's probably gonna break these. All right, let's go back for that top middle head shot. I still think we can do a little bit better, but 
for the moment right now this is all I have for this there's definitely gonna be something that works a little bit tighter than this granted we only have a nine inch barrel let's aim for those targets down there at 55 yards next see how this groups there tethered all right 55 yards we're gonna aim let's go for the aim at the neckline see where it drops Okay, so 55 yards is definitely not happening with this. We're gonna stick around 25 for today. I'd love to hold on to this and see if there's different ammo we can put through it that would hopefully group better than that because versus the regular S45, the longer barrel one, I think this might be hindered by the nine inch barrel. So it might be kind of a close quarters gun. I'm not sure. This is the first time I've ever used one of these. Not really impressed at 55 yards. Let's do a chronograph and ballistics gel test though. All right, we got the 172 grains. I got both chronos out. Let's do three rounds through it. No tether. Seven hundred forty-nine feet per second. Seven hundred and thirty-seven feet per second. 733 feet per second. Now that's kind of interesting. The rounds went in the center and then they all started drooping down like that. They made it completely the way through. Cavitation doesn't look like anything crazy because we weren't using hollow points, but it did penetrate pretty well. I got three spray paints down there and three shots left. Let's see if we can finish those off without reloading. Let's do the far right first. Okay, we can effectively destroy spray paints at 25 yards with the Bintec S45. 100% accuracy. Let's do a Texas Star next. Alright, first Texas Star. We'll do two. Let's do the blue one on the right first. All right, that first one was a little sloppy, so I had to make up for it. Unfortunately, it looks like this ammo kind of wants to start to jam. It gets caught up a little bit and you have to rack it back. So that is a little bit of an issue. Aside from that though, not too bad. Now I'm gonna do the third one just cause I have to make up for it. Those 12 rounds took us from 4,400 PSI. We were at 3,100 PSI. Okay, we did not top off. Let's take out that last star. Eighteen shots later, we're at twenty eight hundred psi. I'm gonna do six more rounds of this. All right, we're on our fourth mag now. No refilling of the air. Let's take on that dueling tree and see if it spins those plates around. We know it takes about a hundred foot pounds to actually turn them. Let's see how much this is actually putting out still. More than a hundred. Twenty-four rounds later, twenty-two hundred psi. Let's keep going. Thirty rounds later, nineteen hundred psi. Unfortunately, I'm down to four thousand psi right now. I got a watermelon down there. I want to dump as many rounds as it takes into them. Chart all the data for this. We'll get velocity, foot pounds. See how many shots and what energy we get from 4,000 down to say, we'll do it to 2,000, how's that? But in the meantime, we'll be destroying a watermelon as well. So I'll have all the data listed for whoever wants to see it.
12 shots, we went from 4,000 to 3,000 PSI. We ran it down to 2,000 PSI, but unfortunately, for some reason, it didn't record all of my shots. We only recorded 15 of them, so I'll show them on screen right now. I think 12 to 18 shots will probably be maximum because we started to hit really low and we're only in about 15 yards here. That's a significant drop. All right, I got some unfinished business with that watermelon first. I was about to say I'm amazed that it's not destroying it like the first one went up. But then I realized once I dumped a couple rounds into it the first time that it has no insides left. They're all pureed on the table. So how can I expect it to explode when there's nothing left inside? All right, let's try some coconuts and I got a pineapple. All right, we're on the third bag. We did not top up there. Let's finish off this pineapple. Then I'll break out a two by four. We'll see if we can break through one. And then if we go through that, we'll see if we can break through more than one. And then we'll finish off with like a brick or something. All right, I set up two two by fours. I think it's gonna make through one, so let's just set up two anyway. If it goes through more than two, then we'll do three. I'm trying different angles. I have an overhead cam look to see if we can actually watch it go through. Granted, it's gonna be going really quick, but. I'm gonna get a little bit closer just so I can get a direct hit on this and make sure it blasts through both. Because I feel like it would have made it through too, but I think it started to go down and just hit the table instead. So let's retry this. That's all we accomplished on the second board. We did recover the slug though. A little beat up. Let's wrap this up with a brick, and I'll give my final thoughts. Okay, don't try this at home. A piece of the brick exploded and hit me back in the chin. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep going anyway. Ta-da, brick's gone. And that's gonna wrap things up with the Bintac BMW S45 Mini. I do like the longer barrel version of this better. We achieved greater accuracy and it gets higher foot pounds with the added barrel length. 293 foot pounds. Time to drop that red star. Not to say that this one isn't capable, but I think we get to fine tune the ammo a little bit more with the nine inch barrel. It struggles much more than the longer barrel versions of these. The ammo we used for the majority of this video worked out pretty well. It did have a couple hangups, but the accuracy compared to the other type that we had out, the 178 grain, this was way better at 25 yards. Now, when we stepped it up to 55 yards, the 172 grain round ammo, that was also all over the place. I'd like to see that clean up way better than that. It did have a couple hangups, but it never jammed the gun. The other ammo jammed up the gun within the first mag, so I was not really happy with that. I would love to find different ammo that worked out better, fed well, shoots well, gets good power, maybe a hollow point, because I'd love to shoot some hollow points through this. That watermelon was begging for a hollow point. <laughs> with a smaller barrel version, it's just gonna be a little bit tougher to find ammo that does exactly what you want out of it. 
If you want more consistent accuracy, more power, maybe the longer barrel version would be better for you. I'll link my video with that one down in the pinned comment and I'll put it in the description. Okay, see ya.